All right, going to read to you a very interesting article from uh, actually a Jewish conservative. I think he's conservative. Um, I've actually corresponded with him over Discord and, and you know YouTube chats and whatever. His name is uh, Halsey English, and he has a oh, I forget he has like an online broadcast or whatever. It's uh, I forget the exact name of it. I don't, have, I don't have the best memory, but um, he he runs a, a news website called uh, Halsey News, and he has a really good article on how the God of Islam, Allah, is not the God of the Bible, and how the God of Islam is a different God, basically. And again, he's Jewish, and he knows quite a lot about the subject. He is um, uh, definitely has a lot of enemies in the Muslim world. A lot of Muslims don't like him uh, because he goes against their pagan cult of Islam, their, their moon cult of idolatry. Their, their cult of moon idolatry, I call it that. I'll call it that. Because uh, Islam, essentially all it is is just a... Uh, um, sorry, blanking it right now. All it is is basically just a pagan moon worship. That's what Allah. That's what Allah is basically. Just a. Uh, what really, what it really comes down to is that if you look at if you look at First Kings eighteen verses twenty six to twenty nine, essentially all that Islam is is just Baal worship, pretty much ancient Baal worship. But going to read you this article on how uh, Islam, the god of Islam, Allah, is a false god, not the same god as the Bible, because people think, well, if Islam is which referred to as an Abrahamic religion, which I reject that term because uh, Abrahamic is not really a correct term for Christianity because, you know, Abraham is not our God. Abraham is not like our leader. Jesus Christ is our leader. Jesus Christ is the son of God and he is God. So, uh, yeah, I, I reject the term Abrahamic. I don't, I don't like that term. Uh, plus two, calling it Abrahamic lumps Christians in with Muslims and lumps Christians in with basically other religions that claim to be Abrahamic, when really Islam is just ancient Baal worship. So don't have much time to get into that, but uh, basically the Jesus Christ of Islam is not the Jesus Christ of the Bible. The Jesus Christ of the Bible is the Son of God. The Jesus Christ of Islam is a false Jesus Christ. Just like the Jesus Christ of Roman Catholicism is a uh, false Jesus Christ. But it says here on Halsey News, it says, um, with the increased amount of negative attention being directed towards Islam, many individuals from various religious backgrounds have felt the need to defend the, the Muslim faith. In their attempt to defend Islam, these individuals often equate their religion to Christianity in an effort to normalize the Islamic faith in the Western world. And um, it says, although there are many historical similarities between the Abrahamic faith and the claim that God, as mentioned in the Torah and the New Testament, and Allah, as mentioned in the Quran and other Islamic texts, are the same being, couldn't be further from the truth. Amen. Okay. The big way to prove that is how the Bible clearly teaches that there's the Godhead. Okay. There's there is a single God, a single God who is made up of three members. Okay. You have God the Father, the Son of God, and the Holy Ghost. So you have a single God. But then they're made up of three members. Okay, there's three and one, like First John five seven says, for there are three that bear record in heaven, and these three are one. You know, three that bear record in heaven. Sorry, there are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So you have a three and one there. Okay, it's it's one God who has a body, Jesus Christ, a soul, God the Father, and a spirit, the Holy Spirit. And these three can interact, they can talk to each other. You see that at the baptism of Jesus in Matthew chapter three, verses sixteen through seventeen. So there is distinction in the Godhead, but the big difference is how Islam says that God is just one, one, and there's no, there's no Godhead. There's God, Allah does not have a son, which is in the Bible. It clearly says that there's a Godhead. There's three in one: the the Son of God, God the Father, and the Holy Ghost. Not three gods, which Muslims will accuse Christians like me of believing in, but it's one God who has three members: a body, soul, and a spirit. So I just want to point that out. So yeah, the God of of Islam is, is a false god. Both the Quran and the Christian Bible acknowledge the sovereignty of God. As a matter of fact, each chapter of the Quran begins the same way, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful. However, God's sovereignty and the necessity to trust God because of his position as creator of the universe is the point at which the two texts separate, go their separate ways. Amen. First and foremost, the God of the Bible is described as three persons and one being. Now, I... I don't like using that term three persons because it's not a scriptural term. I just call it three members because you have the Godhead 
who has, it was a single person, there's four times the word person is used in reference to God. I think it's Job chapter 13, verses 7 to 8, Matthew chapter 27, verse 24, 1 Cor- or 2 Corinthians 2, 10, and Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Those are the four times the word person is used in reference to the Godhead, and all, all of them are, are singular. So I just want to point that out. Uh, and it's just commonly referred to as the Holy Trinity. Again, I, I try to avoid that term. The biblical term is Godhead. The, the term Godhead appears three times three times in the Bible. I think it's Acts 17, 29, Romans 1, 20, and Colossians 2, 9. Those are the three times the word Godhead appears. Uh, so the Father, God, His only begotten Son, Jesus, John 3, 16, and the Holy Spirit, John 14, 16, 17. According to the Quran, Muslims are called to, quote, the, uh, know therefore that there is no God but Allah, Muhammad 47, 19, I think it's a Hadith or something. Allah is encompassed into uh, it compass, Allah encompasses a single being and person, and it is not a father or a, nor a father figure nor a guiding spirit to believers of the Islamic faith. That's that's the big difference. Is that we have in Christianity we have a single God who is uh, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, which is Muslims don't believe that, and they'll actually accuse Christians of being polytheists, um, and accuse us of having three gods. So it's, it's funny. So it says in uh, in Al. Ma, ma, da, Maida 4 uh, verse 171 there's a section uh, direct, addressed directly to quote the people of the book namely Christians and Jews warning them to quote commit no excess in your religion nor say that Allah uh, ought nay, nor say of Allah ought but the truth G- Christ Jesus the son of Mary was no more than a messenger of Allah and his word funny capital W there because in the King James Bible, there's four times the the capital W word of God is used, and it's all uh, no, sorry, it's seven times. I think I said four, seven times where it's used, and all of them are referring to Jesus Christ. It's uh, John chapter one verse one. I think it's three times. Uh, there's First John one one. Uh, I think it's First John five seven. Uh, Revelation nineteen verse twelve. I think it is, and I forget the other one. But um, yeah, there's four, uh, there's a four times. Or sorry, seven times I keep saying four. Seven times where the actually let me just search it up real quick. Yeah, the seven times where the capital W word of God is used in reference to Jesus Christ. So uh, where is it? Case sensitive. Okay. Word. Yeah, so it's, it's John one one three times. John one fourteen. First John one one. First John five seven. And Revelation nineteen thirteen. Those are the four times the capital W word of God is used, and it's always a reference to Jesus Christ. So, and then the lowercase W word of God is referring to the written word of God. So anyway, uh, which he bestowed upon Mary, and a spirit proceeding from him. So believe in Allah and His messengers. Do, say not Trinity. Desist. It will be better for you. Uh, speaking directly against foundational Christian beliefs. Now there is some truth to that. Okay, the Trinity is not scriptural. Okay, the Trinity is not a biblical term. But uh, what the, what this Hadith I think or Quran passage is saying is that Jesus is not God's son and that there is no Godhead, which is uh, heresy. The Quran describes Allah as quote most gracious and most merciful, but does not grant him the title of Father. Contrastingly, the Bible says quote yet for us there is but one God, the Father. Uh, from whom all things came and for whom we live. So that's uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. And it says uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 16, 17, furthers the characterization of God as the Father uh, and describes the followers of God, Christ as God's children. Quote, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, and if children heirs, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Really good passage right there. This puts Christians in a position to receive the grace of God. In Romans 5 1, the Bible says, Since that since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom uh, we have gained access by faith into his grace, uh, in which we now stand. I don't think it's the King James, but it is a really good verse to use. Let me just show what the King James says. Uh, where is it? So it says, uh, Romans 5, 1, Therefore, being justified by fr- by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, verse 2, by whom, also we have, by, whom we all, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope in hope of the glory of God. So I just wanted to give the King James right there. Uh, 
Thus, believers are judged not on performance, but on their inherent inherent positions, position, uh, uh, sorry, position, uh, heirs to God's kingdom. Once they willingly accept God's grace, yeah, exactly, and without any works too, which Islam believes in salvation by works, uh, which is God's grace in, in the Bible is not obtained by works. Ephesians two verses eight to nine, Romans eleven six. Uh, I think it's Second uh, Timothy chapter one verses eight to nine. All say that. God's grace is not earned by our works. It's given to us by God, not, but not earned by our good works. The Bible does not does say that no one can fathom God's greatness. Psalms 145, verse 3. But uh, there is no promise of new mercy or everlasting love to stand on. An arbitrary, sorry, but if there is no promise of new mercy or everlasting love to stand on, an arbitrary um, merciful sovereign is not uh, very reassuring. As a matter of fact, waking up one day to uncertain of your adequacy and your worth, 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 worthiness as an individual, not good at reading on a computer, uh, is one of the many factors that lead Muslims down the path of violent jihad. You see why? Because they have no assurance of their faith. You see, First John chapter five verse thirteen says that we can know that we're saved, meaning we can have assurance. We can know for a fact that we're saved. Muslims don't believe that. See, when you're, when you're believing in work salvation, you never have any assurance of your salvation because you always have the question, am I be good enough? Am I be good enough? You know? But uh, you see, Isaiah chapter, uh, I think it's 64 verse 6, says that our righteousness are as filthy rags in the eyes of God. You know, you, I mean, I think it's Revelation 15, 4 and 1 Samuel 2 verse 2 are clear that God is the only one that is holy and without iniquity. Okay, we're not holy without Jesus Christ and his Righteousness given to us at the cross, at salvation, basically. That is, uh, you can see that in Second Corinthians chapter five, verses nineteen to nineteen through twenty-one. First Corinthians, I think it's one thirty. Romans chapter four talks about that. Romans chapter five talks a bit about that. Romans chapter four, I think it's verses six to twelve. Romans four, verses twenty-one to twenty-five. Uh, these other verses too. I think it's First John chapter three, verse six talks about that. Uh, but yeah, you're not righteous without Jesus Christ. But quotes again the Quran. Uh, Al Madia uh, 554 says, quote, Soon will Allah produce a people whom he will love as they will love him, lowly with the believers, mighty against the rejectors, committing jihad in the way of Allah, and are and never afraid of the reproaches of of he reproaches uh, of such as find fault. Not good at reading the Quran, but uh, that's the end of the quote. Offering a path for Muslims uh, that would at least imply the possibility of assurance in their worthiness to God. So then they go down there. Since there is no reassurance of God's grace in the Quran, some Muslims feel that they must do all they can in order to hopefully be justified by their actions in the end. You see, again, it goes against 1 John 5 13. We can know that we're saved. Let me show that verse. Because in Christianity, we have what's called, there's, old, there's actually an old hymn that says, Blessed Assurance. You see, when you're saved, even saved for a while, you'll have assurance. You'll know for a fact, yes, I'm saved. But when you're trusting in your works like the Roman Catholics do, or like the Pentecostals or Campbellites or whatever, any, any other heretical cult does, then you can never know for certain you're saved. In fact, the Roman Catholic Church teaches that it's actually a sin to assume or have assurance of your salvation, to presume you're saved without merit. First John 5.13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So you can know that you have eternal life. Something that Islam, Roman Catholicism, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Campbellites, Charismatics, whatever, all that, all that, even Hinduism, does not offer that. None of those false cults offer that. There's something in my eye. Um, the grace that Allah has to offer, according to al Madia 554, quote, bestowed upon only whom he pleases. Allah's grace is not free and not guaranteed. The common phrase, inshallah, uh, translated to if God wills it or God willing, underscores the, the fickle nature of Allah as never being certain of what he will do. Now you see, again, in the Christianity, it's a big difference because God's grace is free gift, not earned by our works. Okay, Again, Ephesians 2, 8, 9 talk about that. Uh, First Tim 2 Timothy 1, verses 8 to 9, and Romans 11, 6 all say that God's grace is not, not given to us or not earned by our works, but given to us by God. And uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 24, and Romans chapter 5, verses 15 through 18, uh, both teach that God God's grace is a free gift. Romans 3.24 says that we're justified freely by his grace. And Romans chapter 5, verses 15 through 18, mention several times God's grace being a free gift. So, 
Uh, contrastingly with the Christian Bible, John 3.16 describes God essentially as committing his own jihad for the sake of the world in a sacrifice of his only begotten son so that any, everyone who believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. Christ waged a struggle against sin, a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood, Romans 3.25, so that the rest of the world wouldn't have to. And another really good scripture on that, actually, is, I mentioned, I mentioned this one earlier, because what happened on the cross is that Jesus Christ, he took the sins of the entire world on himself, basically, and and basically died on our, on our behalf as a substitute. Uh, for our, here's a really good verse on the substitutionary atonement. Second, which is something that self-righteous heretics like Jesse Morrell, Richard Pankowski, uh, Watchman D, those guys don't like that because it kicks their self-righteousness. Second Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay, So he, he was made sin for us, he took our sins on the cross. Another good verse on that, Romans chapter 8, verse 3. For what the law could not do, it was, it was the, it, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemns sin in the flesh. And like a verse on the penal substitution, some people call it. Uh, 1 Corinthians, I'm just going to cover a couple of these scriptures real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, of whom God made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So when you're in Christ Jesus, you're made righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Another good verse on the imputed righteousness, as some people call it, and the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. Uh, where is it? Philippians 3 and verse 9. And this is, again, stuff that Islam does not offer, to, well, can, does, basically does not offer you. Same thing with Roman Catholicism and uh, any other workspace cult. Uh, Philippians 3 9 and being found in him not having my own righteousness which is of the law again compare that with Isaiah 64 verse 6 our righteousness are as filthy rags um, but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith so Paul he was saying I don't have my own righteousness I have the righteousness which is of God by faith and there, there are some other scriptures too another good scripture that kind of describes the Muslims pretty well is Romans 10 3 for they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, are going about, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. That's what Muslims are doing. They're trying to establish their own righteousness rather than submit to the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. But just want to cover a couple of those scriptures. Again, some really good scriptures on imputed righteousness are in Romans chapter 4, verses 6 through 12, and, or sorry, 6 through 11, I think it is, and Romans chapter 4, verses 21 through 25. Those are some really good scriptures which talk about how uh, righteousness is, is imputed to you, given to you at salvation. Uh, contrastingly, in the Christian Bible, John 3, oh yeah, I already read that. Uh, the Bible says, uh, quote, everyone has sinned and falls short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. Again, not from the King James, but you get the gist of it. Answering the question of worthiness, but goes on to say that we are, quote, justified freely by his grace through the redemption that uh, came by Christ Jesus. The Bible says in King James that is in Christ Jesus. Um, uh, the the, the uh, stark and yet most simple contrast for, between the Islamic Allah and the Christian God is found in 1 John 4 8, where the Bible declares that God is love. Exactly. The Bible, in fact, a whole chapter of 1 John 4 is a pretty good uh, chapter on that. The Bible, Bible makes it very clear that God is love. It characterizes God as a father, a friend, a counselor, a redeemer, a savior, among many other things. God is love. Allah is not love. According to the opening statement of the Quran, Al Fatiha, Allah is most gracious, gracious, most merciful, the sustainer of the worlds and master of the universe. Allah is an all knowing judge, but Allah is not love. God is love. This is the ultimate difference. And I'd say the biggest difference between Allah and Jehovah of the Bible is that Allah demands that you sacrifice your sons for him and, and valid jihad. Meanwhile, Jehovah God, he sacrificed his son for on your behalf, basically. That's the big difference. So, because Jehovah never tells Christians to sacrifice their sons, in fact, Jehovah, he gave his son as a sacrifice for you, to pay for your sins. Which is Allah, he demands that you give up your sons as a sacrifice to him. That's the big difference. Because th that's kind of the big thing that sets apart Jehovah God from pretty much most false gods, is that most false gods will demand that you give up, you sacrifice your sons to him, or to that God. But Jehovah, he actually gave his son as a sacrifice to pay for your sins. So there's a big difference there. So I want to show you guys that. Uh, the God of Islam is a false 
uh, pagan moon idol. It is not the god of the Bible, and Islam is a false religion that is essentially just satanic. That's all it is. It was started from the councils, the councils of Satan. So don't be deceived by Islam, and don't be deceived by those who say that Christians and Muslims have the same god. No, it's not. Allah is a pagan Arabian moon idol. That's all he is. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.